Okay. Uh, we try to do this in a timely manner. For those of you who are watching, thanks for hanging out. This is Dave Webster, Identity Crisis Design. Uh, what's happening today? So I had a bunch of these uh, little panels made up. Um, not to get too deep into the woods, a lot of times, um, you know, you'll see display panels of, of work. In fact, if I was to get this camera to do, do something correct, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm going to, I'm just going to take this off real quick and show you what I mean. Okay. Um, these pinstripe panels that are all along the wall here. This is like how you display, you know, pinstripe work on a piece of metal, you know. That poster right there is from one of my good friends. He uh, sells his craft and then his brushes and some of my tools too, in fact, the one I'll be demonstrating in a little bit. Most of the time, panels like this, they're about this size. Um, when you go to sell them, and a lot of times we'll do auctions for charity and um, around this area, um, I've just had a conversation with a, a friend slash uh, boss who also does some custom paint work. <clears throat> and he had this, you know, we were, we were talking about, you know, our tendencies to undersell ourselves. And um, what it basically came down to was, that this region, Western Pennsylvania, for whatever reason, is full. I mean, I know what the reason is, and it's it's hard to explain, but it actually has to do with the lack of weather, um, and it's hard to get people to pay for. Uh, it, it's hard to get. It's hard to get what you're worth from your customer base because they have no economic experience outside of Western Pennsylvania. Because the people who tend to move here. The people who are born here tend to stay here, and the people who move here tend to stay here. So it is one of the um, the, the, the retirement population around Western Pennsylvania is, is 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 fairly high. And one of the reasons is because we don't have any we don't have tornado alley, we don't have hurricane season, we don't have flooding, we don't have I mean, how many tornadoes happen in a year in a place where tor tornado alleys happen? We had one in 96 we had a blizzard in 93 we had a flood in 2005 and we don't have hurricanes other than that it's basically you know four seasons and and uh and other than the geography it's it's something where people just they know that they're going to come home and the house is still going to be there it's not going to be underwater it's not going to be covered in snow or um gone so because of that, because because that there's a lack of experience of uh, of economics in other regions, we manage to um, quite naturally um, we end up having this culture of tire kicking around here. So you can be really good at whatever it is that you do, um, but you're still going to be racking your brain trying to figure out how to get other people to not ask you to get, you know, that's always the question, can you do any better on the price? And um, I am so tired of it, I'm actually going to be <laughs> uh, shutting down my body shop operations, not any of this stuff here, the artwork. But uh, enough of that. So anyways, the only reason I say that is to say that the reason why these panels are small is because I'm trying to adjust what I'm getting for my artwork to the population around here, which tends to be cheap. And I don't care um, who knows that I think that because it's true. Uh, so anyways... <clears throat> What I was doing with these these backgrounds was, you know, messing around with some uh, window cleaner and using it as a mask and spraying other colors. Um, here on a piece of steel, I was using some using some 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 side and you know making a uh, an oxidation so that it kind of looks like you know old old signs. Like I want to do something like weathered text on there. I have an old cookie sheet, um, so. These were all primered in uh, gray, and, uh, and I basically had a cookie sheet. I put water in there, and then I dripped <clears throat> some urethane, <clears throat> excuse me, 
some urethane paint on the surface and then just kind of put it in there and moved it around kind of like a, a homemade version of hydro dipping in it that gives you real some real interesting uh, patterns and uh, yeah same here and some of the paint was a, like, like a little bit thicker it kind of gave me a little bit too much of a texture so I might save those for later but um, I'm gonna be pinstriping at an event not this weekend but next and I kind of want to bring some stuff with me that's already done uh, to sell. And I might be able to get rid of one of these um, and see if, I don't know if you'll be able to see this right away. But this is a nice old metal garbage can, um, or it's an old metal bucket that I turned into an office waste paper uh, can. Let's see if I can get this camera up here a little bit so I can fit this guy under here. I, I featured one of these in a past video, but... You know, it's got like that riveted look, dripping some uh, uh, some slime down the side, and on you know have a little creepy eyeball uh, looking out the back there, and then just as a play on the <clears throat> the blight of uh, political correctness, I was actually able to gift one of these to a um, a friend of mine. I can't see what the, what's the camera doing to a, a friend of mine who literally lost his job because they, where he was an IT professional, their new uh, supervisor um, had, you know, he, he was just, you know, casual about the uh, 20, I believe it was the yeah, casual about the 2016 election. And, uh, you know, his views, just basic break, break room talk. And uh, it's somehow managed to uh, lose him his job, which I think is, you know, total bull crap. But uh, he actually landed a better one. He was uh, way more talented than <clears throat> the place he was working gave him credit for. It's really a shame, too, because uh, he was working for a battered women's shelter. And, uh, you know, what's anyways. So I had a bunch of those things I had them made up. And uh, when he, he we were out one night, he was telling me the story and uh, and then we hooked up a couple of weeks later for some, you know, beers and wings. And uh, and uh, I laid that one on him and uh, he was pretty appreciative. Anyways, so this is the powder lines template. This is a product that I made up so that uh, pinstripers like myself, whenever they're doing um, symmetrical design work you know they it comes with this chalk bag full of construction chalk and and this uh and this grid here and you basically just what i what you saw there you rub across the uh the template and it puts this nice light pattern on there and it helps you keep your design uh symmetrical it's good for people who are just learning how to pinstripe <clears throat> where's my folder of stuff um, and it also helps, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, professionals, you know, so a lot of times you're doing the same design flipped over on the top of one motorcycle uh, bag, and then the same design has to go over here. You can lay this grid out on the on, on your surface and uh, be able to um, get a more even symmetrical design on and uh, without having to go back and forth constantly with a, like a ruler or pencil or something like that. So <clears throat> there is a place in the description where you can see uh, where you can get that from. So I have that for sale on my website. On to uh, the next thing. This is some stuff from uh, these are color samples from a, uh, a vinyl uh, catalog, you know, for vinyl cutters and stuff. And I like to keep these handy. So when you're deciding, like, just to you know, kind of like lay them out and kind of gauge your mood, you know, sit them next to your, to your piece here and decide, you know, what direction do you want to go in as far as color? I have a tendency to stick on the same, um, what do you want to call it? On the same side of the color wheel as, uh, as the background. I don't, I don't, I know a lot of guys like to to go off onto the other side, <clears throat> um, but I think I might try working out some stuff with these colors here. And this is just, you know, like like I said, you know, you kind of put it against the uh, 
put it against the panel here and see you know what kind of color combinations you might want to come with what come up with what makes you feel good so i thought i would demonstrate that and you put these guys away and I'll pull out some paint and some brushes it always makes me a little um I don't want to say nervous, but I, I get it. I have a tendency to over, over pack. I don't want that. No, I want pink. Sorry, guys. I'm like, I'm way far away from the microphone looking for colors. And they're all in the, they're like in the bottom of my, uh, let's see what else is going to go with that. You know, I, I never expect to do um, super well at these things. Um, I mean, in fact, this end up this is going to end up maybe sounding like some kind of a not a manifesto, but I'm still trying to work it out in my head. That where's my brush? There it is. Okay. Right, so as I have explained in, in past videos, the way these paints work, um, you can clear over the top of these, these paints. Um, these are enamels. These are one-shot enamels. Uh, and you can clear over them if, uh, if the paint has been catalyzed. So... <clears throat> We're going to do that. Uh, you want to catalyze the paint regardless because uh, what you end up with is paint that doesn't stick around. In other words, Uh, the catalyst is uh, it's hardener, uh, reactive or reactor. It's all basically very uh, synonymous. The catalyst plus the paint, it acts like um, you know it's a, there's a chemical reaction. It makes the paint uh, harder and uh, glossier for for longer. Uh, if you don't put it in there, it turns chalky after a while, and it just doesn't hold up to the elements. And this is basically signed paint from uh, back in the day. All right. Now, I'm going to use a very similar color to what's on here um, because I like to see this, you know, it's like putting putting a regular white over a pearl white. You know, sometimes it looks dark. Sometimes it looks, uh, sometimes it looks light depending on how the sun hits it. So rambling. Anyways, I've been uh, doing this for over 20 years and learning a whole bunch of stuff along the way from a lot of great people. And um, it's, it is, it's not a decision that I like came to lightly. It's just been uh, a, little, a little too much. Um, I've been doing this by myself. Um, I haven't gotten any help from anybody. Uh, and this is this is not it's I, I don't want it to sound like a complaint because um, it's not. I, I know that um, <clears throat> it's such a specific industry and it's such a specific skill with such a specific customer base. Um, it, it can it can drive you uh you know, crazy, you know, you have to educate every one of your customers all over again and give them a crash course on why you're charging what you're charging. And um, every once in a while, you know, you get that, that customer who understands what the stuff is worth. And, um, but anyways, uh, I'm shutting down my, my body shop uh, end of the operations. In other words, I share space with uh, a couple of guys that run their um, now their own auto body business. I do not do auto body, but there are aspects to this that are uh, similar. If you're going to do 
custom paint on someone's motorcycle, you have to prep the surface, get the primers on there and, you know, make sure that uh, you're not going to have rust come through down the line or that the weather is going to affect it badly or that the paint's going to come off if a strong wind hits it. <clears throat> like, a, like a 93 Buick LeSaver. So I'm just trying to get this this paint to the right consistency so that it doesn't slide all over the place. Um, so I, for the longest time, um, I've been doing my own bases and primers and finishes and things like that, because I can't, there's a difference between, there's a difference between somebody doing collision work and somebody doing custom paint work. And uh, a show finish, like where it's like a nice, smooth, mirrory finish, like uh, there's no ripples, there's no orange peel, it doesn't look like it came out of the factory. I spent so much time learning how to do that and getting that right, only to find out that the people that I'm trying to do this for don't know anything about, the majority of them don't understand the difference. So when they say things like, well, yeah, I'm showing my car here and there and whatever, I... Um, I, I know who they're competing with more than, than they do. It's just like having a, a trained eye. Um, and it, and in order to be able to put a finish like that on there, and that's not what's on these. These are just, you know, these are just uh, trinkets. I just want to get some product out so that I can sell uh, something at this, this motorcycle rally. <clears throat> My point is, you have to pay rent, you know, you have to, you know, spend money on expensive um, material that is, you know, harmful. So you have to wear a mask and a suit and work in a booth and try to keep dust out and, and dirt out of it and, uh, and, and do all this, um, you know, by yourself. Um, I've been, I've been doing this on the side. I used to do it uh, full time. And uh, I'm kind of over, I'm over it. I'm not over this part. I like the pinstriping. You know, I like the uh, the art end of it. And it just, you know, it, it occurred to me the one day, like, why am I bending over backwards, you know, trying to be the best auto body guy that I can be? Well, now that I know how to do it, I know how to find somebody who can do it just as well or better um, because they're actually, you know, dedicated and, um, and it's, in, and it's in their blood. I was, I was learning how to do this, you know, the, the, the primers and the finishes out of necessity because I couldn't trust anybody else to put a good finish on my, uh, on my work. And at the time I didn't want to give any of that money away. You know, if I can do it, if I can do it, then uh, I can get I can get paid for it. But you know, going back to the you know to the Western Pennsylvania uh, mindset on this stuff, yeah, this is not an orthodox way of doing it. I'm I'm putting a I'm working from the outside, and normally you work from the inside out. Uh, dash here. I'm going to go straight through that, kind of straight through that, next to this one. I'm going to see if I can un and, and see how this works the whole way down. That's basically what the template is for. If you guys can even see this, I'm not sure. There's a lot of reflection. Yeah, it should be okay. Let's see. Nope. Yeah, so I'm going to go to this thing. And uh, I mean, there's a there's a, there's there are days where I'm just. I'm beat and I'm like, why, you know, like, why did I say that I would go to this thing? And, uh, you know, because a lot of times I end up talking to people about these great ideas that they have and. Um, 
you know, they're really excited and stuff. And I'm like, all right, well, it sounds great. Give me a call. And then, you know, you never hear from them. And, uh, it's why, you know, I'm like, okay, well, here I am, you know, working a full-time job doing this stuff on the side because, you know, nobody ever comes around. And again, it's just, I, I hate, I, it's this, this final, it's just this final thing where I'm like, you know, I'm, I, I, I geez, yeah, I feel like I'm whining about it and, and I'm not, I think it's, I think it's providential, honestly. Um, you know, I, I ended up chasing airbrush. I just, I fell in love with it. And then I got into the, you know, the motorcycle, you know, custom paint community. And then, in, you know, one thing led to another. And then I'm learning how to do body shop stuff and chasing down all this information and, uh, and doing it all this time. Um, and you just, you know, you realize after a while, you're like, you know, when I was a kid, I never expected to be here. In fact, I always tell people, people ask me, how did you, how did you get into this? How did you get into do pinstriping and airbrush? And I'm like, by accident, by, by total, by total accident. Yeah. Another cardinal sin. I shouldn't have done that. If you're right-handed, you start on the left side easily, easily uh, remedied here. And conversely, if you're left-handed, you start on the right side. I hope I said that right. So, so whenever 2021 ends, um, my lease on the shop will be done. I'll be selling equipment that I don't ever plan on using again. And I'm going to be just pursuing something else, try to do. We're streaming. I'm, I'm the the people that follow this channel know that I'm I'm working on a comic book, and uh, and that's the thing. It's it's I, I, all of the artwork that I've been doing, uh, you know, all these years. I've been doing them. Um, I've been doing it for uh, for somebody else, and you know, just. It just it, it occurred to me one day. I'm like, you know, it, it's not wrong to just say, um, you know, just no, you know, for whatever reason, you know, it, like when they say, um, you know, like when you walk into a you know a store and it says it, they reserve the right to refuse service on any grounds, and it's it's just it's not out of hate, although there is. Plenty of uh, aggravation with, you know, any craft like this. Um, it is selfishness. And it's and I believe it's it's justified, you know. Um, this is, you know, this is my talent, whether it's a gift from uh, the Lord or something that I worked at. It's still, I'm the steward of it or it's mine. And, um, I want to do, I want to do it for myself now, you know, I'm like, uh, on the, yeah, uh, am I off on that? Kind of looks like I am, but I don't think I am. Sometimes the template will lie. Uh, but I mean, I mean, I, you know, it's like, I've been dedicated to the craft long enough to where, you know, I'm like, creating and selling equipment for other people that do this. Uh, you know, I've got a, you know, gold, a gold leaf spinneret tool that uh, we use to spin gold leaf, which is another uh, part of custom paint that, um, you know, it's just beautiful when it works out right. I like a lot of this stuff. You know, I don't plan on quitting, you know, pinstriping. There is a bread and butter um, as a, a part of the, uh, what do you want to call it? Of the customer base. And, uh, and that is uh, pinstripe uh, repair. We get, I get a decent amount of that. There's some clients where, you know, you go to the body shop and they've got a, they've got a, a car with a pinstripe on it that's been painted. 
and uh, you know, I go out there for a hundred dollar minimum and match the color, put the stripe back on the car. See you later. Um, don't charge tax because they're charging tax, and it makes it a little easy. Okay, let's see if I can move this around a little bit. You guys can see where that orange is gone. So it's a nice, it's a subtle thing. It's almost like in just another uh, piece of the background. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to try this. I don't know if I should use one of these or one of these. If there was anybody in the chat, I would ask them, but there isn't because I never give anybody any kind of warning that I'm going to be doing this. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah, we'll go with the uh, we'll go with the salmon pink. I'm gonna need more salmon pink because that was a lot of. That was a lot of catalyst. Let's get that mixed up a little bit. Palette the brush. And uh, just you keep palleting until you know it, it until it's got a nice drag. If your if your paint is too wet, it will spread out and uh, give you a real super thick line. Um, uh, what we in the industry call fat ladies. Oops. I might even get into here, create a little custom color. That way it's not such a huge transition from uh, this orange to this uh, to this salmon, which uh, I enjoy right out of the can. Let's see here. And I wanted to get, I had to get some content up there. It's been like days and, um, you know, it's weird. It's not like some kind of a race, but, you know, when the people that you follow are putting out more content than you and, you know, I mean, like, I... <laughs> I, I mean, if I, if I was to take the camera and pan around the room or anybody who, like, sees any of the, uh, the, the previous streams that I've done, so I can see this big fat fly going around the, uh, the studio here. But it's like, you know, it, it's a mess. And, and one of the things that is like, like the end of 2021, um, you know, the next year I'm taking a sabbatical from all the dealership events. Um, you know, I need to, I need to stay down here and get, and get my, my head right. And, uh, and, and get organized, build some bookshelves, you know, I've got, a, I mean, there's a vinyl cutter over in one corner. I don't know if you guys can on one side of the table here. That's where that's a um, a transfer tape roller, you know, it fits nicely over there. So I can produce like vinyl graphics for stuff and like all this equipment that I have that has nothing to do with um, with comic books that I need to find space for that I I'll still want to use because it's not you know I don't want to just like quit everything and just you know do this comic book. What is it got a hair? Yeah. Um, so it's just, there's like boxes of t-shirts and product and um, it's, ah, whatever, it's everywhere. I'm sure everybody's gone through this before. All right, let's see. Well, now that I'm looking at this, I'm trying to figure out what's the top and what's the bottom. And I think I'm going to go with, this is the top. Um, I am going to try to ignore all of the orange that I have on here and not try to go along with the same strokes. Um, like I said, I want this orange to basically just be as much a part of the background as the rest. <clears throat> and uh, maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe it'll look like crap. Who knows? 
All right. Let's stripe. Come on, hold the brush right. Yeah, a little over to one side there. Let's see if I can fix it over here. Mm -hmm. So you go up like this, and then like that. really is it is a great zen you know when the when the paint is doing what it's supposed to do and you know, everything it everything's moving around like um it really flows you know and it's a it feels more like a ride than a fight and a lot of times one of my striper friends had told me and, and, th and this is the guy who's done Gone to Sturgis, done um, really am amazing work, um, great instructional videos. So my buddy Wizard had said that, you know, he'll be out there getting his stuff ready and on the first day and still feel like, um, you know, he's not, he, he's not even in the groove for the first you know, three or four hours. And it always feels nice when, you know, the, one of the, you know, people that you've been um, comparing yourself to uh, and uh, trying to, trying to chase down, you know, your, your peers lets you know that they're human too. It's nice. Uh, there's a lot of good guys in that community and uh, they're all on, they're like all on Facebook and on none of the social media that I use because I, I, I totally bailed on Facebook. I just, I just got so pissed the one day I was like, fuck it, screw it. Um, yep, there's our friend, the fly. They love the smell of this stuff, especially if you're using turpentine. Um, but yeah, that whole, um, Where was I? <laughs> oh, Facebook. Yeah, I was just um, speaking my mind about stuff. And uh, apparently, and I don't know how this is possible. Um, not, and of course, none of the, none of this, my striper friends or anything like that. But, um, you know, people in my family are giving me, you know, giving me shit over, that's not going to work. Yeah, something's off in the middle there. You know, just giving me, you know, giving me crap over, you know, speaking my mind. So I was like, all right, fine. And that usually, it, it seems like life is a lot better now because uh, I'm, quote, not talking. Um Sometimes relationships are just a lot better. You know, like we do a lot better in real life than we do on social media. So if you don't follow me around to the uh, places I like to hang out, then maybe, just maybe, we won't fight in real life. All right. 
I'm going to put a uh, to some, uh, let's see, independent, independent elements out here. I don't want to bog it up too much. Yeah, I was getting a little, little dry, just a little dry, not flowing enough on that line. Almost flowing too much on that one. That was close. this baby off and I had a there it is I had a towel here I'm gonna put one more color in here, make it um, make it simple, and then call it because it's not that I don't care. I just can't afford to take too much time on these. Also, I want to kill that fly. I'm like shut the camera off, kill the fly, and uh, that way nobody has to be uh, triggered because. Uh, I'm not all about the wildlife in my basement. I will murder. Is, what, is, what is it with insect rights anyways? I mean, they never really get a fair shake when you think about it. Animal rights was a huge thing. You know, cute squirrels don't this. Of course, nobody, you know, we, we want to, you know, care for our pets. And to the point where I was like, well, even having pets is bad. That's not animal rights, blah, blah, blah. Insects have gone right past not having rights to becoming dinner. Uh, where is the consistency? Uh, I would like to know. Just saying. Those cicadas are going to stop coming around if, uh, you know, we turn them into whatever. Who knows? You know what? Maybe... Uh, maybe it becomes like in this dystopian future, like that the protein sludge stuff on the uh, uh, on the Snowpiercer, where you know it becomes the main uh, protein for us. So we actually super breed these bugs, and then uh, they they get out and fly everywhere, and that's where that that becomes the uh, the pestilence in the Book of Re Revelation, and we actually do it to ourselves. I would laugh. <sighs> the ramblings of a man who's clearly smelling his paint too much. All right, let's see. I'm gonna. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Now, what am I gonna do, though? Really, I'm like this is this is already kind of crowded. Uh, I don't know that. Uh, I, I don't remember what my grade was in color theory, <clears throat> but something's telling me that I just passed. Because um, as soon as I put this yellow down, I think I started going irk. Okay. 
Like this is like bubblegum wrapper color combination. Whatever we learn by doing. Doesn't it? This is like one of those weird, like, this is like saltwater taffy colors. And for some reason, I have this tenacious D song going through my head. And I can't sing it because uh, it's all very, very foul. Let's talk about ticklers and toes and again. That's why these videos have like these streams just they get weird after a while because of because of the paint fumes and uh, whatever happens to be going through my mind and then there's this slight sense of obligation that I should be talking about something while I paint to make it more interesting um, you know but what's happening you know the 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 piece itself is becoming as as muddled and and busy and incoherent is my thought process so is there a connection who knows Just a couple more strokes. Okay, well, I'm calling that because uh, I can't fit anything more in there. It's going to just, once I get the grid off, which you just take off with the dry towel. Uh, my motivations are not that pure. You know, I want to get some, I want to get some content out there. Um, I want to get some good content out there. I don't know if this panel is it. It might be that uh, I end up just wiping the whole thing off and trying again. But uh, I'll leave the stream up because, um, you know, there's nothing nothing wrong with being real on the uh, interwebs. I'll maybe try something else tomorrow. So 
to clean off my brush and soak it in some uh, 10W30. Make sure that any of the little paint particles and stuff that are they're still in there. Actually, I'm going to rinse this off a little bit more because I can see some pink way up at the top. And this is going to be a, you know, dirty lacquer thinner. Um, a lot of guys use mineral spirits, but because um, they use mineral spirits because it's easier on the brush. And um, it also, and, and that is that is where you're using a lot of enamels. Uh, they're a little bit easier to clean out. Some of the paints that I have are urethanes, and mineral spirits will not cut it. So I use lacquer thinner. I try to get it as dry. I mean, they, you know, brushes don't last forever, of course, but you know, I'll try to get it as clean as possible. And then as soon as uh, as soon as I'm done, I put it in 10W30 non detergent. My uh, old timers secret. And um, real gentle because I don't want to pull out any hairs. But I do want to keep the shape of the brush and put it in the kit. All done. Um, if you learned something, then great. You know, if you learned what not to do, also good. Um, I think I might. You know, it's gonna be. I might make a decision in two minutes after the camera gets shut off <laughs> as to uh, what I want to do with this. So, um, but until then, be good, everybody, and um, good luck with everything that you've got going on in life. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And maybe on the next video, we'll get some uh, comic book stuff going because. Um, I did pull in a bunch of stuff from my uh, local shop, um, not the least of which was I actually completed something. This will be a completely different video, but uh, I was able to get the rest of these things that I've always wanted since uh, I was a kid. There's a story behind that one. Um, I don't know how much time I've got left before I got to go to work, so you guys take it easy. and. I will talk to you later.